fuel on? Have you got fuel in the tank? Are the valves open? Is the fuel pressure correct? Then progressively looking through your lube oil, your jacket water temperatures, salt water, and exhaust temperature. <coughs> okay? And what you're doing here is checking that there's nothing seriously wrong. <coughs> right, now eventually we should then come back to our synchronizing panel. <coughs> and we're now going to do the synchronizing. You will be told as a starting point, here for example, number one alternator is on the board. I want you to synchronize number two alternator to number one alternator. <coughs> so if you want to break it down in terms of your presentation, do the checks. That's one area. The next is carrying out the synchronization and the sort of thing here we're looking for is incoming machine number two is it set correctly we check the bus bar the frequency and the voltage are they correct then we check our incoming machine has it got voltage What's the frequency? <coughs> now once we've established this, then we can put on our synchroscope. <coughs> now a common mistake here, we hear people talking of the ideal. That is, we want it going clockwise as slowly as possible. Fine. But what you will find, some of these processes take a few minutes. And what can happen is we get a long period of silence from the presenter. This is like a punishment. <laughs> it's the opportunity where you can explain that we don't want it going anti-clockwise and slowly because it will reject the load. Ideal should be 12 o'clock, physically nearly impossible to achieve. Okay. <coughs> And again, what we're looking for here is, do you understand what you're doing? Okay with that? Right, so our incoming is anti-clockwise. It signifies that our incoming machine is going too slow. So we're going to bring the incoming machine speed up. So by raising the speed, we raise the frequency. And as we come closer, then the synchroscope should start to slow down. And eventually change direction. Now here you've got a good example where it's going to take a few minutes. As you've noticed, I've managed to talk all the way through it. Yeah? What can happen here is people operate something and don't tell us what they're doing. You've got to describe what you're doing. Okay? Right, we've now got it going clockwise. Again, we let it settle down. Now the next key thing, reset get ready over the main breaker to close it. I do not want to hear people talking of putting the breaker on. We don't use that terminology. We close a breaker or we open a breaker. We don't put them on and off. Okay? So again, one of the key things here is getting the timing and we need to press the breaker at 5 to 12. Now here, explain why. And if 
we leave it to 12 o'clock, we're too late because we have to consider our reaction time of our finger and also the breaker physically moving. And it's a very fast reaction. <coughs> so here again, we just watch it to rotate a couple of times. Don't brush it. No panic for it. Once we get it all settled down, 5 to 12, press, and it should lock on. The next key thing to point out is that the load comes over. Okay? <coughs> this shows that they are locked together. Next operation, switch off the synchroscope. Now again, explain why. And we don't let that synchroscope run continuously because it is a braided motor. So it has a certain life. Okay? Now the two alternators are now synchronized and in parallel. The next operation is load balancing or load sharing. So you need to explain now that we need to transfer the load from here over to here. And to do this, we bring the speed of number two up and bring the speed of number one down. Make sure the load comes across and at the same time, watching that frequency that may change as well. Now with the time that you've got, you're not going to get a perfect balance. Don't worry about that. Okay? As long as we can see you're doing the operation. <coughs> now once you're close to a balance, <coughs> And again, <coughs> checks you're going to make is what is the load distribution, what is the frequency. Okay. <coughs> Normally, we would stop you there and then ask you to take an alternator off of the board. You may be given the choice of which one, I may tell you which one. Okay. Now again, various methods of doing this. One of them is to bring the load down. And here, if we're taking number one off of the board, we would take the load off of it and raise number two. <coughs> and again, let it do nice and slow. There is no fixed time for your presentation. Normally, you should be able to complete all of this in 15 minutes. Okay. <coughs> now again, as the load comes across, keeping an eye on it. And what we're looking for here is the alternator going off of the board should be around 10 kilowatts. So when we trip the breaker, less chance of getting arcing, damaging that breaker. Okay? Now you may be instructed to take an alternator off the board in any particular way you choose. You could do it by tripping the breaker here or by using the trip there. Same thing. The third option we've got is to reverse power tripping. And in this case, what we would have to do is keep it coming down until we see the arrow coming over. And quite often we then have to force it. of interest. The real students have just done this operation and right for 
off the board now. Three girls were given 80% mark for their presentation. There's a challenge for you. Being beaten by girls. Yeah? <laughs> They were extremely good. We need women examiner then. They did a good job. And they look better than you do. What kind of topic were they arguing on? Sorry? Well, what topic were they arguing on? They were doing exactly what I've just done with you. Yeah? Okay? So the kilowatts, the kilowatt meter, what does that read? Is that apparent power, real power? Or? This is real power. Real power. Yeah. It, kilowatt meters <coughs> are basically voltage times current. Mm. Well, I'm not going to go into power factors with you, but you might be asked, you know, what is the power factors? But it won't be in depth. Yeah? Have you done power factor with in the class? Yeah. yeah. Right, now what will happen is then normally we'll stop you and you'll be asked a couple of questions. Okay? All okay with that? Yep. yep. Right, now again, you know, get your team sorted out. Now it's your final chance. Yep. Now I know there's one gentleman amongst this group who's actually had to do this in real life. I'm expecting a spectacular performance from that team. Out of interest, how many guys have actually been practicing or had a go? Yeah? I'm uh, pleased to see. Point of interest, remember we had Dr. Lee sitting in with us on Monday. He was highly complimentary of your enthusiasm. I don't know if he was looking at the same class as I was, but there you go. And he actually said to me, he wished he could have students like you rather than the ones he's got. Wow. Uh, um, who's Dr. Lee? I told you, you've uh, got a high reputation to maintain. Okay? Right, any questions? Yeah? Do we actually turn off the alternator? No, leave it running. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Alrighty. Right, so get yourself sorted out, guys. I'm going to be coming round again, sorting out the batting order. Okay.